In this video, we're going to take a look at one of the problems that can come up with substitution. In substitution, our first step is to find the lone variable and get him completely alone. However, in this problem, we have 5x minus 6y equals negative 14, and negative 2x plus 4y equals 12. There's no variable that seems relatively easy to get alone. If this is the case and we're forced to use substitution, um, we really just have to pick one. We can spend time looking at which one's the best one to pick, or we can just pick a variable and force him to be alone. Let's just pick on the very first variable there, x. We could have picked any variable. I'm going to move the second equation out of the way for now. So if we want to get that x alone, we have to add 6y to both sides. Gives us 5x equals 6y minus 14, or negative 14 plus 6y is the same thing. And to get x alone, we divide each term by 5, and we end up with these fractions. x is equal to 6 fifths y minus 14 fifths. And the fractions aren't bad, just a little inconvenient, but the process is still the same. If x is equal to this expression, we can replace the x in the other equation with this expression. So we'll now have negative 2x, which is 6 fifths y minus 14 fifths, plus 4y equals 12. And then we can solve this equation. Well, we know with fractions and parentheses, we have to clear the parentheses first. So we'll distribute the 2 through. It might help to think about that as negative 2 over 1. It's going to give us negative 12 fifths y plus 28 fifths plus 4y equals 12. And then to make life a little easier, I'm going to clear the denominators by multiplying each term by the LCD of 5 each term, not just the fractions, but each term. That way, it'll divide out of the fractions, giving us negative 12y plus 28 plus 5 times 4 is 20y equals 5 times 12, or 60. Now we can continue solving. The fractions are out of there. 20 and negative 12 is 8y plus 28 equals 60. Subtract 28 from both sides, and 8y equals 32. Divide both sides by 8, and this one's nice enough that it did come out to a nice whole number of 4. We now know what y equals. Once we know what y equals, we can go back to that x equals equation that we had and replace the y with 4 and find out what x actually equals. Nice thing about substitution is there is always an x equals equation to go back to to find what x equals, or y equals, if that's what we're looking for. So we have 6 fifths of y, y is 4, minus 14 fifths. Well, 6 fifths times 4, putting it over 1 is 24 fifths minus 14 fifths. It's a nice common denominator. 24 minus 14 is 10 fifths, which reduces to 2. And we found our x. We have our ordered pair solution, x comma y, 2 comma 4, solving by using the substitution method. If there is no lone variable with substitution, we have to just pick on one of the variables and get him alone. Quite often, that means we'll be dealing with fractions along the way. Fractions aren't bad, we just have to remember how to clear them out as we solve, maybe some adding and subtracting, multiplying with fractions. But if we can keep that in mind, it's the same exact pattern and same exact process.